the universe is amazing, the sky is amazing, and seeing the stars as beautiful as they are in the Milky Way with your naked eye and then being able to photograph it, it's just, it's mind blowing and it's addicting. You can't see anything like this in most parts of the state, most parts of the country. I would much rather be in a, in a park somewhere in the mountains or hiking or exploring than sitting in traffic. We're out here because it is one of the, if not the darkest sky in the lower continental 48 with a workshop group who have all signed up to come out here and learn how to photograph the night sky. I come out a day early. I come out and scout out locations to make sure that you know, I know where the Milky Way is going to be rising so I can get them a good shot. And not run over this little road runner here. If we were here and there's you know, a giant light right here, obviously that's not going to work for our shot. But it looks like it's going to work out pretty nicely because you know, it's no light here. Terling was back here, that will be minimal light. Really kind of stoked about this one. And I haven't shot it yet, so it'll be really fun. It's always my biggest fear is to come back and like Terling was all of a sudden like blown up <laughs> and you have like this huge city. Some of these students are brand making new into photography and you know they're just now learning how to turn on their camera. Some have gone from the film days and now they come to digital and they want to learn how to shoot digitally. You know my goal for you guys is not only to learn but to walk away with at least one shot from this trip that you're like I want to go and print this and hang this up my wall. And if you get that one shot, that's a good weekend. You know, I've been on trips for a week where I've gone out. Sunset approaches, I take them out to our first area to shoot at. Introduce them to their subjects, show them ideas for compositions, show them, you know, where the Milky Way and the stars will be. Um, the lower the better, Milky Way comes up right here. It's a really, really nice composition. And then as we go from, you know, sunset to twilight, they start getting a few hints of the stars above and then about a half after sunset, they get a full blown view of the Milky Way. And uh, we spend the next five, six hours out here shooting. It's really cool bringing students out here because many of them don't get to see the stars like this. They're stuck in cities, which, you know, they see three or four stars and they think, you know, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And when they come out here, their minds are absolutely blown because they can just see the night sky as beautiful as it is. And once they get shooting, all I ask is no red lights, no cell phones, no lights at all. That's going to make the whole process go much faster. And I teach them how to light paint their subjects, how to expose for the Milky Way, how to focus on it, and really how to take something that is absolutely majestic in the sky and tell a story with it. That the light's on. Really? Yep. So you're going to cover basically almost 180 degrees. Okay. You could simply walk outside, take a picture of the Milky Way in the sky, but I try to you know, figure out a way to tie that in with you know, a human interest. It's cool to incorporate it something as simple as you know, a cactus or a, a person or a building or uh, an old abandoned car. You know, telling a story of, okay, here's this town that's you know, 100, 200 years old. You have a, a city that has come and gone, but yet it still has the same night sky as it did when it was booming. It's luck as well as skill and patience and practice and experience. It's moments like that that make you work for the shot, that make that final shot when you do get that beautiful Milky Way so, so worth every ounce of effort that you put forth.